Today I'm going to teach you about Google Cloud Functions. So we're going to go over how to create a Google Cloud Function, adding dependencies to them, and then I'm going to give a bit of a demo on using it and then covering the billing and cost aspect. Let's get right into creating a Cloud Function. So you'll need to make sure you have a Google Cloud account and just be in your Cloud Console. Uh, to use Cloud Functions, you're going to have to also make sure you have a credit card on file and have a project. So I made this uh, test project to showcase. So you'll want to type Cloud Functions and you'll see this, this one appear right here. So click on that. And I just wanted to show you guys on a brand new project how this is going to look like. You'll need to make sure that billing is enabled. If you have no billing, you'll see like a message here, enter in billing, or you can just go to your billing page and you'll need to enter in a credit card. And the first time you click on this, you're going to get this pop up and it's going to ask you for to enable a bunch of these uh, APIs. And uh, it's very nice with Google. You just click on enable and it's going to enable all of these. So make sure you do that. Uh, this will take like like a few minutes, maybe a minute or two. So within here, you get a few options. We'll start off with the basics. So you have first and second gen. Um, I recommend second gen. That's the newest version of uh, Cloud Functions. They have some advantages like uh, much longer timeout, 60 seconds, which is quite a bit. And then you can give your function a name here as long as it's not one that you've already used in the same region and then you get the option to select your region so i'm going to keep it as us central one we have here's the url that's going to be used to invoke the function so it's going to be like region the project you have it in then cloud functions and then slash whatever the function name is and then uh for trigger type you have a bunch of options here you could invoke these from like a cloud compute or a lot of different places. For now, let's just very simple, have a HTTPS trigger type. And then normally it's good to have uh, requiring some authentication, but for this uh, demo purposes, I'm going to have allow just a public access to this, um, to this API basically. If you open up this, you'll have runtime build and security and here you can change the timeout from 60 seconds. You can lower it. There's also memory allocated, which is going to affect the billing. So um, by default, it's 256 MIB, which I'm going to leave. You have a CPU. You can also select a service account, which is going to be very useful if you have some other cloud resource like a cloud compute and you need to connect it so you can select uh, the right service account from here and do that. All right, I'm just going to go to connections as well. So you can allow all traffic or you can have uh, just allowing internal traffic only. So there, and that's it. I mean, I didn't really change. I didn't change anything with this uh, runtime build and security settings. And now let's just build this. So you just simply click next and then we need to select our runtime. So for this project, let's use Python 3.1. And you see it's going to have some dummy code in here that you can just directly edit. This hello HTTP request is where all of our code is going to be housed and what's going to be executed. For now, we're just going to simply click on deploy. Okay, it looks like it's deployed. So you have the, the URL right here that if you click on it, it's going to invoke the function. Let's click on edit right now and we'll be able to edit the code of the function. Uh, we'll go back into the editor. Right, so we'll click this. We'll be back in the editor. And we have here the our trigger for it, which is that URL. But let's go back into code. And now we have our function right here in the code. So we can, we have, um, it's, there's a bunch of stuff here that it does. If we actually invoke this function, it's just going to say return hello world. When this one's run, it just looks like this. It just has a hello miss world message. Yeah. So why don't I give you guys a demo of using cloud functions where we take advantage of additional files. So let's do something with uh, Google Sheets. For this demo, I'm going to be using uh, Google Sheets. And to use Google Sheets, you need, um, you need a service account. So you need to use the Google Sheets API and then download the service account, which is like your credentials to be able to use Google Sheets through Python. So you'll need this service account.json and then we can just paste in our um, JSON credentials 
right into here. Right. So if you write in the search bar up here, uh, Sheets, just click on Google Sheets API. That's what I'm going to use to demo here. And um, I've already enabled it the first time. You're going to see a button here that says enable and you're going to want to click it. Once you click that, and it's going to take you to this uh, page and you'll have under enable APIs and services, library, credentials, OAuth. You'll want to go to credentials and we're going to click on create credentials up here and we're going to want this uh, service account. And, you know, just give your service account a name and you can just click on create and continue and you will click on done. So once you get your service account, you're going to want to click on it. It'll be under um, service accounts and you'll want to click on keys and you'll want to click on create a new key. And then you're going to want the JSON one. So click create and it's going to download something. And we can click right here, this plus add a file. And we'll write right in here, service account.json. And then we can click it, edit it. And I'm going to paste in the credentials right in here. All right. So I just pasted in my um, service account credentials. So that means we can use this in our main.py. So first thing we need to do is add in our imports that I'm going to be using for this example. So I'm going to be using uh, pandas, uh, G spread for um, Google Sheets. We're going to need our service account and then we're going to also be using uh, Flask. Next, we'll go into requirements.txt and we'll add in our requirements and we can specify the versions right in here like that. And we shouldn't need uh, just JSONify. It should be um, this uh, Flask should be included. There's some like libraries that are, you don't need to put as dependencies. So yeah, we don't need any of this. We can actually just delete all of this. I made some changes here. I made a basic script that's going to use all of these uh, dependencies up here. I'll give you a walkthrough in just a sec, but let's test it out. So we're going to click deploy. All right, so it'll take a moment to finish um, updating. So we'll give that a second. You can see down here, you do get some metrics here on the how much it was invoked. So I, we invoked it a few times. So once it's finished building, we can test this out. I just redeployed with a few small edits in case, um, in case we don't get a sheet and have a bit of a fallback here. Request JSON equals request.get JSON. We try and get the sheet ID out. And if there's no sheet ID, we just get an error. So all of this is just to help us get our sheet ID. This is our um, this is our scope for our credentials and clients. So that's for our service account here, which is for um, Google Sheets. So we're getting all our credentials from this service account.json that we set up earlier. And then this is just how you open up a spreadsheet inside of uh, Google Sheets where we're just storing the data. And then I like to work with pandas. So we are using a DF, DF panda. And then lastly, we're just returning the data. Okay, made this new spreadsheet right here. We're going to want to get the spreadsheet ID. So you can see right here, we have this uh, public spreadsheet. Up here is our sheet ID. So we're just going to want to copy that. Once you get your sheet ID, we'll just come back into here. Um, you'll put a question mark for parameter. And then you want to put sheet ID and then equals and then paste in that sheet ID. If you run it, you'll see right there that we get the stuff from the sheet. And you can see if we start to make changes to our Google Sheet, and if we rerun it, you'll see that we get those um, changes which are being returned. Main purpose here was just to give you basic idea of how to use a cloud function. And I wanted to show something with a couple of dependencies that use the requirements. And that's even using a new file added on to here. It's very straightforward to work with this uh, inline editor. All right, so I just wanted to run through a bit on how the cloud functions are priced. So you're going to be paying based on invocations. 
So the first 2 million invocations are free. So after um, 2 million, you pay 40 cents per invocation, which um, translates to like zero point zero 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 four four dollars Now, the other way you're going to be paying is going to be compute time, which is going to depend on the size of the instance you're uh, using. And they have uh, tier one and tier two pricing. So we're using uh, V2. So it's going to be based on how much memory you selected. And they charge per 100 milliseconds. So I recommend checking this out. By default, we used uh, 256 MB when we created our cloud function. So we're going to be getting charged um, 0 0.000000. 648 um, dollars unless you're doing like some heavy compute stuff that takes quite a while i mean i find i only spend like a few uh, pennies on cloud functions but i recommend testing out how long your compute time is going to be and uh, calculating out what this would translate to um, actually all right well i hope this video was helpful in giving you guys a basic intro to cloud functions i think they're very easy to work with personally. And I find that adding dependencies and files and, and anything else is definitely easier than working with uh, lambdas. They both have their pros and cons, I guess, but as far as ease of use and being able to use the UI, that's definitely one advantage with uh, cloud functions. All right, thanks for watching. And I hope this was a good intro to setting up a really basic cloud function. Thank you. Bye-bye.